and welcome to Aussie Tech Ed's episode of 586, the 31st of May 2018. If all goes well, we are streaming live to Facebook and it's all synced up, so hello Facebook. All right, uh, tune in radio if you want to listen to us 24-7 back to back, not just us hopefully, but uh, plenty of other podcasts on there, Australian podcasts, uh, then in a looping style sort of fashion, they just, yeah, 24-7 back to back, as I said, Aussie Tech Radio, get the tune in radio app on your device and search up Aussie Tech Radio. Get us on facebook.com uh, forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Like us and you can tune in live. Uh, hopefully this will be a regular thing. It looks like it's all working. Jordan's been uh, hard at work and got it all happening. We'll tell you the technology behind it in a second. And uh, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. You can watch the video if you haven't done so and you're maybe just listening to us on the podcast. You might want to say, might be thinking to yourself, what do these clowns look like? Well, then you can go and have a look. Uh, AussieTechEds.com.au forward slash paper and AussieTechEds.com.au forward slash podcast is where you'll find the show notes, probably the most important thing there. And a uh, and you can watch the video and listen to the audio there as well. We are brought to you by ATH Web Hosting and also other podcasts, the Aussie Max Zone, My Tech Opinion, the Aussie Tech Crypto, all uh, shooting up the charts, the podcast universal charts. And uh, no, no Jason again this week. So we're uh, without the two best podcasters in the world, but hopefully one of them will be back next week. <laughs> All right, let's welcome whoever's on the panel tonight. And we have Jordan and Joe. Let's go to Joe first. How are you going, Joe? I'm good, thanks. How are you going? Yeah, good. Good to see you back. You recovered from the C-Bit experience? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. Oh, good uh, stuff. Good. Have you been uh, playing with your uh, your home assistants? I have. Um, haven't had much um, luck with it though. Um, oh, that's no good. <laughs> I've got a story about a home assistant in a minute. And Jordan, uh, how you going? I'm good, mate. And you? Good, good. It's been a busy week. It has been very. They're all busy, aren't they? They're all busy. If, you, if you're not busy, well, you're doing something wrong. Now, uh, now you've been busy, especially today, uh, getting this. All I suppose through the week, yes, for doing, week. Your, doing your Facebooks and. Uh, yep. t- now tell us, tell us. It's not just what, what sort of technology have you tried to get us to this point of streaming live to Facebook this week? <laughs> well, where do you start? I mean, last week it was out of sync, and I was blaming sound cards and uh, general direction of of data traffic between hosts and, and clients and all those sorts of things. And then um, I tried putting OBS, which is what is it? What, what is it? Uh, online broadcasting studio or whatever it is yeah something like um that. tried putting that in windows and it, i couldn't get it to work in windows believe it or not i'm sure that many people out there already do have it working windows fine maybe it's just something to do with the, the pc i had it on i had more success running it in mint linux mint and that's what we're running on now so, so instead of having it in a virtual machine like i originally planned we thought i think you and i came to the conclusion that maybe the audio was all out of sync because um so instead of having it in a virtual machine, like yeah, I think we got a someone who's watching Facebook. Joe, Joe are you watching Facebook again? That was my fault. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think you and I, Glenn, both came to the cl- conclusion last week that it would be better to send the audio and the video and everything at the same time to a to maybe another user or something rather than yeah. splitting the audio and video up everywhere. So we've done that. We've created um, a- another Zoom. Um, client on the Linux machine separate from the one I'm on so that everything's coming together from you. So it all seems that's, to be working. That's where we're at. Everything seems to be together, I think. Good. So well, we'll find out if anybody starts complaining. Time will tell. Uh, I'm not watching the Facebook chat this week, actually. I'll, I'll try and get that up in a second uh, when one of you guys goes off on a, on a story or whatever. We'll get uh, up we on do have Andrew, is it Go or Go? Yeah. Hello. Says it's working great. Good. Good. Oh, don't we love hearing that? <laughs> and Don't we love hearing that. We've got a couple of people in there. Daniel Drake. Nice. G'day. Yeah. It's like the old romper rooms. Who have we got this week? Who can I see? Yep, yeah, all good, Daniel says. Ah, good. Now, talking about uh, virtual assistants, I went out and bought one myself. I got a... Uh, What's her name? <laughs> uh, Google with a <laughs> mini. She's wearing a mini. And She's wearing a mini. <laughs> Google Home Mini, I bought, because JB... Okay, nice. Yeah, JB Hi-Fi had them on from 79 down to 49. And I thought, oh, well, really? That's cheap. Yeah. I thought, well, why the hell not, hey? So I haven't done too much with it. Yeah, she's good for telling you the time and the weather and stuff. The best thing that, that I've found useful for it, though, is like 
like just giving it commands to play music or even to play radio. Like I'll just say, I'll oh, just play, I don't know, two GB or four or uh, Gold FM or Hot Tomato or whatever it is, and it just goes, okay, playing um, Hot Tomato on TuneIn Radio, and it just streams it. That's great. I love it. It's just it saves. It must. So if you were to do it on the app, it probably takes you maybe thirty seconds for it all to come through. Uh, maybe another fifteen for it to buffer because the app does buffer. But uh, but this the the mini just she just takes it in a stride and delivers you the audio in about maybe five seconds. So it's pretty good. I like that it. That is good. Yeah, so I'm going to, uh, like with Joey, I'll I'll probably listen to intently to over his experience and probably, yeah, take some few little tidbits from him and what to do with it and what not to do with it. But uh, but which ones did you have, Joe? Did you say? You had both or something, is that right? Mm-hmm. I've actually got three. I've got the, uh, the Mini, I've got the uh, normal Google Home, and I've got the Amazon Echo. Right, so which are you? What which ones have you tested, or have you tested any? Or I've tested mostly the uh, the Google Home. Uh, we use that all the time. My missus uses it for timers, um, getting traffic updates, listening to news. Right, I've never tried it for traffic updates. Oh, yeah, you got to try it. It was really good. I, once I had to go to a, a Marconi club, and I said, "Hey Google, how long before I get to Marconi club?" And it came back and says, according to traffic conditions, we estimate you would take 33 minutes. Oh, how good is that? Yeah. yeah, that's good. I think one of the things I've got to work out is that it doesn't know, and I think it's pretty easy by just putting in everyone else's Google account into it. Uh, but like if I say play play Elvis on Spotify, then it'll play it. But then if someone else says play Lady Gaga on Spotify, well, it uses my account to play it so i've got to sort that out because otherwise because then i'm listening to my account down say here in the office and then someone wants and someone wants to play lady gaga up there what well, uses my account so it cuts me off down here oh so, i see what you mean so you yeah. need two yeah. accounts well we've got two, two, two homes do you well i don't know i think it's just might be a matter of just putting the 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 gmail addresses of everyone else into it and so that it knows then their voice print and and so forth i think I think okay. well, I'm gonna. I'm looking into it. I'm looking into that. So uh, yeah, it's good. Um, but yeah, I think there's an option in there that you can actually uh, tell tell it to not to listen to anyone other than yourself. Right, but then you still want everyone else to be able to use it if they want. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So look, I'll work on that, and maybe someone out there uh, is. An idea might be just to set up a uh, a family account. Set up a family account. Everyone can use it. And then that way they don't bother you when you're using yours. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, a Spotify family account. You mean? Yeah. Well, we do. We do have the family, like the paid family account, uh, but it still pulls it off of mine if if they talk to it upstairs because I've I've got it. Yeah, I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll sort it out, and I'll let you know. Well, people are probably listening, going, "Oh, you guys, we've sorted that out five years ago." <laughs> or maybe not five years ago, you know. Uh, yeah, so um, what else has been happening? Uh, not too much. Let's uh, get into with some stories and, yeah, see where we go. There's been some big stories, I believe. I'm waiting for them. <laughs> oh, I've got one for you later. Been a busy week. Now, Amazon is to block Australian shoppers from its US website. Probably not a great loss <laughs> for me. From July 1st, when the new GST regulations begin... Australian consumers shopping on Amazon international sites will be, re, be redirected to the local Australian site. So, you know, who knows how 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 heavy that sort of redirection is going to be. Probably a good VPN will get right past that if you needed to. Yeah. Um, but then I yeah, suppose... I don't know about that. You, sorry? I don't, I don't think the VPN will do anything. Yeah, but you should be able to get through to the US site, though, with a VPN. Yeah. I think. Because I noticed, like, I signed up for Audible... Uh, a little while ago, and then I just got that confused with the whole thing. I ended up just cancelling because I signed up, I bought a book, and then I came back a few m- months later because, you know, you get the free one. And then I came back and I thought, I'll get another free one with another bloody email address or whatever. So I'd sign up again, and then I thought, no, oh, no, I'll do the right thing, and I want to, you know, and I thought, well, where's all these books that, that, that I've had? But anyway, so I ended up having a US account and an Australian account, and I can't merge them together. And I went, you know what? Forget it. I can't be can't be bothered. So it's a bit tricky there. They're going to sort that out. But, mm. but in a statement issued by uh, one of the oh, issued to the ABC in Australia, Amazon said it regretted the move and the inconvenience to customers accustomed to visiting the Amazon's global online stores. 
Uh, currently, GST is applied to items bought overseas for more than a thousand dollars. So, yes. <laughs> so I'm trying not to interrupt. Um, what's the go with? Is that anything? I suppose I mean, I've never shopped on Amazon, but is that anything like Netflix, for example, where you, you look at the Netflix Australian site? And there's not nearly as much content on there as there might be on the Netflix no. US side. Well, the Is Amazon that going to be the same sort of scenario with Amazon. Are we going to be less? Well, I guess. Like I'll show you the the Amazon is like a marketplace. I guess so. Like say the Ebay's and Etsy's or whatever. So you can you you got something to sell. You chuck it up there on Amazon, and you can buy it. So in Australia, they they've put the warehouse down in Melbourne somewhere, I think. So, you yeah. know, so you get the, the free freight and you might get the, you know, the quick delivery of all these, all these items. Uh, but the items are stored in Australia. So therefore they're stored in, like they, because they're in Australia, there's probably going to be less of them. And there's yeah, probably so that's a scaled down version. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And there's probably not going to be as many products available as what there will be in the so US. So you normally would then jump over to the US site, wouldn't you? And buy what you couldn't well, get on the Australian site, wouldn't yes, you? Yes. Well, you're cool. not allowed to do that. Well, sometimes you get onto the US site and it'll say, oh, we don't ship this to Australia. You know, so then it's up to the, the US site or the, the person who owns the goods if they're going to ship it to Australia or not. Yeah, right. So, but yeah, so uh, so it's just like a, yeah, just the little shopping centre on the, on the internet, mm. just like the eBay and stuff. I think I've got an Amazon account from many, many years ago. It was US based, and you could always buy stuff from there. But like you yeah. said, it would just depend on whether the whether they wanted to ship it out to yeah, that's right, Australia or not. Yeah. Well, look, I think next year it's sort of been sort of touted around that the Amazon's going to get a bit more price competitive because uh, mm. you know, like I think I looked at it last year when I was looking for I was going to buy one of these uh, Sonos speakers. And so I looked at Amazon. Let me have a look now and see what's going on. I bought one of these Play 5s. That's the Play 3. Was there a Play 5 up there? Play 5. Yeah, so, see, it's six ninety nine on Amazon. See, so even last year I was able to get mine for about uh, six thirty, I think, and Amazon had it for about seven fifty. Mm. So I thought, that's when I thought, well, that was the first and... Second last time I went to the Amazon. The last time, the last time I went to Amazon is now. So I've never went back. You know, after mm. after I, I thought, well, I'm not going back there. It's just double. It's two D. Mm. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the the nature of the beast. Yeah. All right. Um, what else have we got going? Uh, so what did you have any stories, Jordan? Or are you just going to crack on with what we've got? I did manage to. I've got a couple of uh, a couple of ones I want to touch on. Not not. Um, oh, I did have. <laughs> yeah. It was in front of me. Um, you on that edge still? You no, actually. Oh, of, no. I'm, not, I'm actually not on any. <laughs> I'm on an app. <laughs> still Windows based. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is one of my, I'm a little bit, this is one of my pet hates about um, the Apple phone. And I'm a bit of a Google, I'm a Google Pixel fan. Yeah. So, but now I'm kind of bit bit disheartened because Google Pixel Three will reportedly uh, be built by Foxcom and have a massive notch at the top. There's my Apple pet hate. Why do we have to have a notch? What? Why is it? Can't it just go? Can't it just go straight across the top? Why do we have to have those tiny little raised bits at the top and the left and right of the notch? Can't just maybe it helps it not slip out of your hand or something. I don't know. Having a notch. Yeah, I don't for know the, for the camera to see through. So we it says that, uh, and I won't try and read the whole thing because it's you know how these reporters like to write about everything. Well, maybe in if every they're... detail, but um, it kind of just basically says that the description is that rumor has it. Um, well, it's reportedly becoming more than rumors that Pixel Three is going to have a notch, and I think the oh, smaller dear. Pixel Three is not going to have the notch. This is like a real first world problem, though, isn't it? Oh, I think oh, it's, this I is think it is absolutely a first world problem. Like what is so? Pixel- I was really looking forward to getting you know the, the I've got the Pixel One. I was thinking and I skipped the Pixel Two. And I thought you know maybe I'll get the Pixel Three. Yeah, notches, man. Yeah, can't they just put a thing across the top and square it off? And it should be, in my opinion, it should be out of sight. Like you shouldn't know it exists. You shouldn't know that that notch is there. You shouldn't know the camera's there. 
or the speaker's there. It should be out of sight. So what it, about... In a way, though, so, that you can actually get rid of that notch. Like you can... That some I know that the one of the LG phones, the LG Seven, I think a new one has come out. They have um, something in the software that allows you to blacken out the rest of it, so that it does look like it's it's all one. It's so it's not obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it shouldn't be obvious. I mean, it, it must cost them more money to make those to kind of notch it out than it would just to put a strip across the top of the phone. You'd think, wouldn't you? Well, what about? I can only guess. How how's this for an explanation? That if it went, if a bit of glass went straight across the camera, well, it would get smudgy and fingerprinty and greasy. No, I don't mean so, that the glass. I just mean cut, like, just make it part of the bezel at the top. What do you mean? Well, so, they're, tr- they're, they're, they're trying their hardest to get the screens to go edge to edge from corner to corner to every possible section of the phone. Yeah. And I think if that's an, if that's has to be an impossible area to get the screen to go down to. I mean, we've got buttons at the bottom that can work through the glass and even they're still um you know they're even they're still not quite uncovered or covered you should say with glass but the um the tops why can't we just forget this whole idea of going to the top <laughs> and yeah. just leave it at the, how, how it was yeah look i don't it doesn't phase me at all i don't really it doesn't phase me in the slightest but the notch is so obvious it looks terrible because they've notched around it i think yeah. just, just i think just leave it yeah all right. That would be my vote. No notches. You're down no for notches. no notch. What are you down? Haven't started this notch trend, and now we've got notches coming out in Android. What What's are you? Next? What What are you down for, Joe? Notch or no notch? Don't or don't care. I don't. Know. I don't actually mind it. Yeah. I don't have one. I don't have a phone with a notch in it. But I don't actually mind. I reckon it's not, it's not such a bad idea. Yeah, I don't. I don't have no opinion at all. To be honest, I don't care. But, but as long know. as the phone works. Hmm. So um, I guess, watch, like, I guess video you can use that little section there to, to indicate your, um, you know, your Wi-Fi, and you still have that there anyway. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Why not just leave it? Yeah, I don't know. If it's don't impossible know. to remove it. Why not just leave the top of it squared off? Well, because like, you know, like I said, you can't. I know the the LG Seven, the new one has come out, which has got that notch as well. You can't. The software mm. there's an actual indication there that says that you can lock out and you just you can't tell yeah so when you're watching a movie or something it squares it off uh no it's it's not it's more of a, a thing that you turn on and off yourself yeah yeah it just makes the screen behind it black so that you can't yeah that's what it yeah, does so when you're watching a movie you don't have a notch in the side of your movie the whole yeah, time that, that's it. that's true yeah yeah well, but you know, I thought if they're going to have it so you can cover it up when you don't want it, what's the point of having it at all? I mean, surely they can use that space up there for something else, you know, for more battery life or better antennas, or mm. I don't know, you know. Well, so seeing that we're live, let's have a look and see who's uh, commenting. Uh, so we've got Evan. He's work. It's, the stream is working fine in the bath. So glad you're being. <laughs> glad you're getting. <laughs> don't don't drop your phone. Glad you're getting clean while you listen to us. That's great. As, um, uh, Enrico, my mini talks by itself for no reason. Any reason? Any ideas why? No. Um, What's her name? I, I, I still reckon it, it's probably heard something in the background. Is and, it this mini? Yeah, the mini. It's probably heard something in the background <laughs> and. It's come across and um, it's thought it's, it's it's tried to answer something that you've 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 heard in the background. It's been proven. I mean, if you you, you can actually go and look through your logs on what's happened on the mini and what's been said, and uh, what the mini's been said and what you've said to the mini, um, and you and from there um, you can try and work out whether it was something that you said, whether it's something that somebody else said, or something that the TV said. Because um, sometimes the TV will even trigger my one, and it'll just it'll say something random. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it does it. So I guess though, if it, if it starts doing it in a quiet environment, uh, there's a little reset button. I'd just factory reset it and see if it, if it and if it kept doing it. Yeah. It's, uh, a factory reset. A factory reset won't do anything. But if it's got something wrong with it, confused itself somehow, you'd give that a shot, though, wouldn't you? Oh look, you can if you like, but I don't think that'll fix anything. It, it's it's got it's got more to do with it's heard something, or yeah. it thinks it heard something, or it has heard something, and it's misinterpreted it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got more to do with that. I've been I've been getting it to tell me riddles. That's been quite interesting. Well, you, you know that you know that story that happened last week where they reckon <laughs> that uh, someone was talking in the background and it sent a message 
I think it was the Amazon Echo that did that. Yeah, yeah Alexia. Yeah. To somebody else. Yeah. Well, somebody's gone through the logs and has heard um, that it that gone through the logs of the conversation. And um, although it says that um, the, the, the it did send something out to the other person, but at the same time, it's because it misinterpreted something that's heard within the within the house. Yeah, so what happened, what it said was uh, it, rec- it recorded a bit of a conversation and then sent it to uh, SMS that convers- that audio to someone. So, yeah, that's, that's bit, right. Yeah, that's what it did, yeah. It's a bit dodgy. But, uh, yeah, well, no, that's, that's why I didn't buy one of those. And plus, call, uh, and plus uh, Joe said not to. He said the, the home was the better. Yeah, so, you don't want to, you know, be... You don't want to be in the bath and get out and find there's a pizza man standing at the door with your order. You order. <laughs> no, not with the not with that cheese all dripping everywhere. No way. Now <laughs> <the> pizza. <laughs> well, yeah. Now, um, Joe, what have you been going on to this week? Um, there's a big crackdown on these Cody boxes. Oh, I read that. Mm. Yeah, I mean the, the the people who are selling them on Amazon and on eBay. Um, they're getting really. They're getting Amazon and eBay actually cracking down on these people with some of these these uh, dodgy uh, uh, Cody boxes. The the Cody itself is is not illegal or anything like that, right? The software is not illegal. But what happens is that people put on these third party apps and third party um, add ons, and um, then they sell these boxes at a high price. You may have seen them, you know, a Cody box, three hundred and fifty or four hundred dollars. Oh, geez, I got one up here. It's only fifty three. All right, yes, yeah. but I know that they one, do. Yeah. Yes, that one there will probably do the same job as a four hundred dollar one. It's just that someone's decided upon themselves to reinstall all the apps and all the add ons to say a specific um, type of uh, group or, or set of people, hmm. and then they say, okay, well, I'll just use this as an example. Uh, this is a Chinese-based um, movies and uh, videos and, and streaming, and we're selling it for four hundred dollars or three ninety-five or, or something like that. And that's that's the part. I mean, they're all illegal. Don't get me wrong. They're all they're all getting illegal content from somewhere. But that's I think they're trying to crack down on those ones because they're actually selling them on, on Amazon. And yeah. Them on Amazon. I've seen them. Yeah. There was a guy in England. That uh, that uh, was selling them, and he got he got in trouble. I think he had to stop. But yeah, so like Cody, yeah, as you said, Cody, Cody, the software is not illegal. Uh, what happens is like you can put buy code, or you can download Cody for free, and you can put on your PC or your Mac or uh, your Raspberry Pi or Android or phone or whatever. So or Xbox, so you can put it, you can freely and legally put Cody on. But what happens is it's the third party apps that integrate into Cody, that plug in into Cody. Uh, so you might say, uh, I want to watch, I don't know, I want to watch a, an app, I want to watch movies. So you go searching around the place and that you'll find an app that plugs into Cody that'll bring you all the movies into Cody, if you know what I mean. So Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Even, even the, the, like the English Premier League, um, there's uh, the football uh, in England as well. There was uh, someone who put on the live stream as it was being played and, all these people with these Cody boxes logged into that stream and watched it for free when it was supposed to be a paid thing. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much they did the same thing on Facebook, but this is just, they're actually using the box, the Cody boxes to do it. Yeah. 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 So it's that a, guy in England, he got, he got done because he preloaded it, didn't he? That's right. Well, yeah, that's they what they're all doing. And yeah. they're selling them like that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So like Cody by itself is, there's no, none of these apps, you, you know, you, you can't do that. It's, Cody by itself is probably meant for uh, just sharing your existing video and and your, your audio pictures, pictures and, and stuff around and... the house, uh, or videos that you've owned that you might have ripped that you've owned onto your server or something, and you can you know watch those around the house wherever your Cody is. But yeah, look, <clears throat> it's not a bad piece of software. It's pretty good. But some of those apps aren't um, some of those apps aren't illegal. It's only the ones that are doing the illegal streaming. Yeah, the, you know the pirated movies and things, but you know you can get like different apps for different news services and you know for CNET and things like that. And none of those are all legal. You can get to your heart's content. You can download all, all of those and install them. And well, that's right. You can do even like watch YouTube and all those things that are the YouTube yeah. apps and stuff. Yeah. And here's my here's my Cody box, right? This oh one. wow! Right. Oh nice. Yeah, it's it's a good one. It's um, it's it's a Zdu brand. Yeah, 
yeah. and um, it's got the Wi-Fi built into it. And at the back, you'll notice that there's the Ethernet. There's a uh, digital um, sound. Yeah, this bit of thing. Yeah. Um, and you'll notice that there's two HDMIs on this one. Yeah. All right. One's HDMI in and one's HDMI out. Right. Yeah. So. Plug a DVD want... player in. Sorry. Sorry. You could plug a DVD player into it. Exactly right. And that's what I've been doing with this box because if you get a game of the old VHS movies, you know, the old uh, tape this, I used to um, convert them over from a um, component to, um, to HDMI, plug it into this, hit record because it's got a record function. And then from there, um, record it into an MP4. Geez, that's and all right. That's good. That's how I, that's how I, I did all my did all I converted all my um, all my movies um, in this box. Yeah, nice. It's yeah. digital. But you have to get the one. You have to get the one with the two HDMI's in and out. I actually use my um, Google Chrome through this as well. My Chromecast. Yeah. Okay. So what what's what's the base operating system on that one? Do you know? That's an Android. Yeah. Right. Uh, this one here's got a fairly old version. It says Android 4.4, I think it is. What's the model of that thing? What's it called? It's a Z Zdu. How do you spell that? I'll try and get up on the screen. Z I D O O. Let's have a look and see if we can find that. Keep going. Now this one, this yeah. one's um. There's a newer one of these. You'll have to put a link in the show notes, uh, Glenn, because that looks really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So Z I D O O TV. I. I I like how you, you convert your VHSs into it. That's yeah, that's good. Of, yeah, not all of them have got that facility. Only this one here, and there's a new version of this. That one there you got up on the screen just there, that new one. Yeah. That grey one, that's, that's the new one of this. Right. Um, that's, that's got also as well. But you have to you have to be have to have a look because they're not all like that. So what is – okay, so how much are these things? And where do you get them? eBay, I guess. You can get them from eBay. Yeah, I got them. I got mine from eBay from a reseller on eBay. Right. So that do they? Does that one come preloaded, or is that not really? This one here's got um, the Android system preloaded. Uh, it doesn't have any add-ons. I had to add them on myself. Right. And it's fairly fairly easy to do. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how to do it. Yeah. Okay. There we go. 160, 170 bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, so if it's Android, you can just put Cody on there still anyway. That's right. But before I, I actually had this box before it was um in the in the Play Store, before Cody was in the Play Store and you used to sideload it. Yeah, right. Oh, that's good. I I I love that that idea. I've got some VHS tapes and some old video eight tapes. I don't think they're called. Are they video eight or super eight? Video yeah, either one. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean I I I use my like I said, I've used my Google um Google Chrome, just HDMI straight in there. And I go to the uh, facility that says you want to record something, and it puts straight up on the screen. How did you get? Did you say you did VHS tapes as well? Yeah. So how did you get the hate convert from the RGB or whatever it is to HDMI? Yeah. If, you, if you if you have one of those, um, just like a little converter, dual dual, um, dual players. One has got a DVD player and a, a VHS. Oh, yeah. Right. They got HDMI out. Right. Right. So if you grab one of those and plug HDMI out to HDMI in to one of these type of boxes, and then once you pop, pop it up on the screen, you go to the – I have to actually do a video on it if you, if you really want to. I can do it like a, a show you how, to, how it works sort of thing. And um, then it start, you start hitting record, and you can see it recording in the background. Yeah, okay. Nice. Nice. And then you just stop it, and then once you stop it, it saves it as a file. You, get to the, you, you get, go back in and rename it. Whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, okay. Can you um, record that you said you've got a, a dual DVD and video player? Can you record straight to DVD with that? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't tried it the other way. I've only just tried from DVD straight into there. It's like picture, picture your. Yeah, your, I know what you mean. Yeah, I just yeah. mean, I wondered if you could record to DVD on the one unit without going to the new thing. To you, your, can buy, you can buy one that are like that. Mm. Uh, but the one I have doesn't mind it because those ones there usually have like some sort of a hard drive in them as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just wondered if, if that was better than 
or whether you'd be better for, for people out there who might may not have the dual unit can they just go and buy a uh like like uh, glenn was saying a, a converter to convert the rcas you know your your audio and video rca component or whatever it's called yeah you can get them to, can't VGA, get them. to yeah. D, um, hdmi yeah you can get them yeah. yeah i've actually got a couple here i don't think they'd be too expensive but yeah, no. that's good because I know uh, a lot of people got old VHS tapes and they don't last forever. So um, no. even CDs or DVDs, they don't last forever. But, no. Uh, but yeah, but uh, yeah. Also uh, on the Facebook Live, Eric. How you going, Eric? He's uh, watching us instead of studying. So get back to it. <laughs> All right. You, this is this is one for you then, Eric. Microsoft is now more valuable than Google. Who would have thought? <laughs> Oh, oh, the Jordan, excited. I know, he is excited. Where's that pizza? Now, valued at $753 billion US dollars, Microsoft sits just ahead of Alphabet, Google, at $739 billion, or just ahead, only by, you know, $15, $14 billion. Uh, I didn't my, even think it was possible. I know. I would have thought Google was just unstoppable, and and Apple even. But Microsoft and Google have been trading places on the ranking since Google first surpassed the company in 2012. Uh, this is a decisive gain. It shows that the Microsoft CEO, uh, Satya Nadella, has managed to change the company's image and turn its fortunes around. So it makes everyone happy. Because I'm sure, uh, well, Steve Barmer, he sort of ran it into the ground a bit, didn't he? Yeah. Now, by focusing Microsoft... something to do with Nokia? Oh, there's something to do with a lot of things. <laughs> He's dancing and funny faces and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, um, <coughs> Microsoft, uh, by focusing Microsoft into product categories like artificial intelligence and cloud computing, while simultaneously axing failing divisions like the Windows Phone, Microsoft has successfully modernized. So good. Uh, look, they've, they've made a big impact into the cloud sphere, you know, with their Azure. And yep. uh, look, every every <laughs> second business that you go and see is doing the Office 365. Uh, they've got a lot of goodwill from the old days. Like, uh, like Google's got their Google uh, apps or Google Suite. But, you know, I think the legacy from oh, Windows and the old Office, that's just, just, keep, that's just kept going for them. Uh, so Microsoft is also uh, hot on the heels of Amazon, the second largest company in the world. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so... So that's at seven hundred eighty-two. So you got, so you got uh, at the top of that is Apple. Okay, so you got Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. I would have thought Google was much better than that, you know, much higher. But anyway, yeah, I would have thought. Yeah, because that they, they're, uh, you know, pay for searches, pay for clicks, and business. That must be just immense. That'd be mind blowing. How much money just must just flow into those guys, <laughs> yeah, through that stuff. That's just crazy. Uh, all right. I think, I think we were talking about this last week. Sorry, I was just having a chuckle at Evan's last comment on the uh, Facebook Live. Is he out of the bath yet? He just said his battery's at 5% and the water's getting cold. <laughs> so time, to, time to go. Thanks thanks for watching, Evan. Yeah. Good work. Stay um, no, I was just going to say the Microsoft, uh, we were talking about this Microsoft thing last week, kind of, and I touched on it. I get a little bit, a little bit frustrated with... Um, people always go to me you know apple's just got so much more there's so much more you know so much more innovation so much more innovative i can't even say the word um try to say that again innovative innovative that's it and uh and then i look at microsoft and you look at these new you know the studio computers and the hubs and all these things and they look so awesome and so nice it just goes to show that they really are starting to modernize wouldn't you agree mm. like in comparison, I mean, Apple, and I'm not going to annoy everybody but by picking on Apple, but Apple don't even have a touchscreen laptop or mm. desktop computer. Like, the only touchscreen they have is a mobile device. You know, mm. Windows has at least rebuilt their operating system. and That's right. Microsoft, I could say, has rebuilt their operating system so they can evolve with the touchscreen evolution. Mm. Well, the, the, isn't Apple uh, rumoured to be trying to get the, the Mac to run the you know, the, all the iPad stuff and, and maybe, well, it can't go vice versa, can it? You can't, you won't be able to run Mac OS, OS X stuff on an iPad. Well, wouldn't be powerful I would love, They would love to. I've said it for years. If only they, I think the very first thing when I, got, I saw the iPads, I thought if they had a bloody USB on it, I'd probably buy one. Mm. But they never did. And they never, they just, if they had a full 
operating system and a USB would just would have meant so much more. But they just couldn't do it on the CPUs that they had at the time, I suppose. Now, uh, Joe and the FBI want us to reboot our modems. Why, Joe? Why? Why are we doing that? Well, apparently the FBI um, have discovered that um, some Russian hackers um, have been infecting um, some of our home and office PCs. Oh, that's no good. So uh, how how can we tell if we've got an infected uh, router? Well, you you really can't tell. Um, The routers aren't really that consumer friendly that you can actually get in there and, and see for yourself. You have to really get in there deep and into the operating system and learn and see, and, and the average person just can't get in there, so you can't really tell. Right, so, uh, where are we? <laughs> so sorry, yeah, so so the FBI, so, because there were some problems last week, or recently about Cisco, and that they had some mm-hmm. issues, so so what you're saying, there's, so there's malware that's got into, do we know what brands or anything, or are they just, just general, that's just out there? It just attacks. Not not every brand has been affected. Um, mostly, the Linksys routers, uh, Microtech. Right. Uh, the, yeah. Net- so, like the same ones that I think we were talking about the other other week about, yeah, the, the the Cisco stuffs getting yeah hacked. So yeah, so that's terrible. So if it, if your router's infected, uh, I guess, well, if you don't know how. Well, well, do you just reboot anyway? Like, why not just reboot? Well, if you are infected, you don't know you're infected, but you are infected and you reboot for the hell of it, is that going to hurt it if you are infected? Does that make sense? No. Look, <laughs> look <laughs> I, I, would, I would recommend that everybody, whether they have one of these routers or not, reboot it anyway. It's just a matter of grabbing a power plug, unplugging it, uh, waiting you know, 10, 15 seconds, then plugging it back in. Now, yeah. that won't actually get rid of the, if you've actually got it, that won't actually get rid of it. But what it does do is it stops, um, the way it works is that the, the virus, um, the malware sits inside the memory of the of the router. Right? So yeah. once it sits in the memory of the router, once you un- unplug the power, then that memory gets um, lost. And then... Um, it loses its connection to the, the the website where it actually talks back home to. Yeah. Now, where the FBI come in is that they've they've identified where the um this malware calls home. So, it they found the website and they've uh, gone in and they've closed it down. Right. Good. Good. So um yeah. So reboot. Uh, I've rebooted mine. Nothing happened. So I've got the Telstra ones. Their net gears. Was that Necky? I think that was. Was that on the list? TP Link Netgear, yeah. So that one worked all right. Mine worked. Yeah. So the only other thing I can, the only other thing is that it might be a good idea to to also check if there's any firmware updates. Hmm. That by doing a firmware update on your, on your router, um, you, you'll find that that's probably the only way you're going to get rid of it. But if you if you've rebooted it, you've already half half got fixed the problem anyway. Because the site that it's going to, the site it, the site it calls home like. Every time it wants to connect to the, the hackers back to the hackers, uh, that's been taken down, so it shouldn't be a problem anyway. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, give it a give it a bit of a boot, and uh, I don't think it would hurt too much. So yeah, no, but it would only improve your network uh, probably bandwidth and stability. Giving it a reboot every now and then anyway. People often don't reboot for months years. at a time. You oh, know? people I've it doesn't seen... hurt to refresh to refresh them and give them a restart. No, yeah. that's right. And, and sometimes at least every thirty days, you should be able to you should reboot your router. Yeah, sometimes and that's, that's the most. Yeah, so sometimes I just reboot just because it's been a while. I think oh, I haven't done that for a while, so I just go out and uh, yeah. just reboot it. But yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, interesting. But I think even if you did reboot, I think it doesn't really stop. There's no prevention of this malware from coming back through because it got there in the first place, eh? So it's it's still going to come back unless it's just got to reestablish its connection again. That's all. Yeah, unless there's some sort of firmware update or something. and uh, But gee, how many people actually feel safe in going in and doing a firmware update and how many people even know how to get into their router to do that to start with, you know? That's, so, yeah, that, that's... Well, I, know this, I know this guy that'll help you. Name's Glenn Goodman. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help. 
We we'll fix your router for you. Give him a, give him a ring. <laughs> yes, I'll give it a boot. Uh, yeah. So two hundred and fifty right. bucks an hour. Well, that's good. Well, oh, that, I, oh, that I can go to the Joe the Gadgets Man website, and uh, in there <laughs> you'll find uh, a, a little form you can fill in. Fill in the form. Yeah. Uh, send me the details of all your router and all that, and I'll tell you what. I'll write back to you, and I'll tell you what you need to do to fix it. Oh, oh look at that. There you that's go. A good man. There How you much are you going to charge for the for the for that? I'm not going to charge anything. Oh, look at that! Oh. You're going to get so many knocks on your door now, Joe. I won't get any customers now with Joe no. around. You have to lower your <laughs> price from 250 now to 200 oh, no. now. Oh, 225. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, where, where 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 is your Facebook page, Joe? What, what where can people find this? It's uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, Joe the Gadgets Man. Now, is that the plural or the singular? I forget. Joe the Gadget Man. There's a, yeah, I keep saying that, but my actual website is Joe the Gadgets Man. Right. So the Facebook is the singular gadget. Correct. Gadget Man. All right. So yeah, go there. And if you've got a, yeah, you know, if you want to update your modem, yeah, ask Joe and uh, he'll tell you how. I won't, I won't actually do it for you, but what I will do is I'll tell you where you can get the information from. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, if there, if there is a firmware update to be done, how do, how do you go about doing that? Look, at once. Or if, you, or if that's all too much for you, call Glenn and he'll do it for you. That's right. <laughs> but look, it is pretty easy. If you can get pointed in the right direction, it is relatively easy these days. These days, the modems, they come with a button. You just push the, the thing on the screen, the button, and it just goes, do you want to update the firmware? You go, yes. You just don't turn it off while it's doing it, and Bob's your uncle. That's well, yeah, but the router I have, I have the Asus router, and it comes with a little app as well. And in the app, if you go in the app, it, does say there's a little indicator that says you've got a firmware update. No, nice, but, nice. Yeah, all you got to do is just go into there. Okay, okay, yeah, do the update. Um, and yeah, like like you said, make sure no one pulls the plug on it. Yeah, and if you got a Telstra modem, don't worry about it. They don't they don't <laughs> have updates. Well, they reckon they do, but they they reckon that they push them themselves. There's no button. They to... do. They actually do. They actually push it. They push it from their end. Yeah, right. That's good. That's probably why what happens is if you don't have it backed up. I don't know if you can even back up the settings, but I didn't have mine backed up. I went through my Telstra mode and put all the, you know, like the uh, times of day that I wanted the internet available to the kids and all this. I went through all that, put it all down in all the devices, and then one day I just come out, it was all gone. So Telstra must have re, re-spiked it and rebooted it or something and lost all my settings. So I thought, oh, well, I can't be bothered doing uh, that again. A firmware update from, the, from your service provider shouldn't do that to you. Should I just update the actual settings? Mm. I, I think maybe they've done like a hard reset, you know, in your case. Yeah, they've, they've done something I wasn't happy with. Uh, now, last week we said something like, uh, or we did say something that was, went along the lines of Virgin Mobile stores will be gone. Uh, Optus is closing down that arm of their business, and apparently these stores are just going to be gone in a month before the, June the 30th. So, wow. the, yeah, that's fast. Uh, the, it's closing the doors as early as next week. All 36 locations expected to shut for good by the end of June. So there you go. It's no good for if you got a job there. You won't have for much longer. Uh, now, Jordan, Microsoft brags as Edge beats Chrome in battery. Two Microsoft stories tonight. I oh, know. You know, just just for you. I'm in my element. You've worked hard through the week getting this live stream. Thanks, mate. A success. So I thought I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll shower you with Edge stories and Microsoft okay. stories. Okay, I'm living on the Edge. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, so the Edge beats Chrome in battery life in Microsoft video. So we'd hope so if it was Edge and Microsoft Video, but anyway. Uh, comparing Firefox, Edge and Chrome on three separate Microsoft Surface Books streaming continuous video, the Edge lasts 14 hours, 20 minutes, beating Google Chrome, which entered sleep mode at 12 hours and 33 minutes, and Firefox, which lasted seven hours. Jeez, what a hungry, power-hungry little beast Firefox is. So this experiment showed that the battery life in a PC running Edge lasts a little bit longer, 98% longer than Firefox and 14% longer than Chrome. So there you go. Is that, there you go. Is that enough to make everyone jump to Chrome? I don't know. To Edge? Ah, uh, to Edge, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's enough to make me jump to Chrome anyway because <laughs> I like Chrome. Look, I, you know, I the last update... I, I know it's crashed a few computers. I've, I'm still recovering from one of my friend's computers. They've been trying to get me to fix over the internet, which is one of the hardest things when you've got to almost rebuild it. But I've had really not much issue with Edge. I've had a 
few little crashes before this update, but not since the new one. So I don't know whether they've oh they're gonna have to change some stuff in it or I don't know, but it's sort of they've always had a bit of a drama with their browsers, haven't they? Like my uh, Internet Explorer that's just got bagged from inception to the grave, just about you know, and especially Internet Explorer six that was just you know the one of the most ugliest browsers that you'd ever see. Mm. Uh, in the term, in the way that it rendered and and its backend operations and so forth, it wasn't compatible with certain other browsers, and it wasn't compatible with certain coding. If your site wanted to work on IE six rather than, like, you could build an internet site that worked on Chrome and Firefox, and then you loaded it up with uh, Internet Explorer six, it wouldn't work. So therefore, you, if your designer had to put in extra bits of code to make it work just for IE six, oh, it was a nightmare. But uh, yeah, but anyway, that's Look, what I happened. think you've got to, at the end of the day, you've got to have um, all of them anyway, you know, like you've got to have, especially if you're someone like you, Glenn, that's doing a lot of web development and stuff, you need to have um, sort of the three main flavors of, of browser anyway, don't you really? Yes. Yeah. So you're always switching between Google or Edge or, micro, uh, you know, Firefox or whatever. And yeah. then if you're testing websites, you've got to make sure they all work on all of them. Mm. So there's... Like you say, there's going to be slightly different code for each one, which is kind kind of annoying. You just wish that we need a standard. We need a, a a third party browser built by someone that's not related to anybody. That everybody just goes, let's do that. Well, I think these days most browsers work all right. I like I don't really see too much problems. You get problems sometimes with just the ATOs. The latest one I've had problems with. It used mm. to be that it wouldn't work in anything but IE, and now it uh, seems that yeah, it won't. won't work in IE. It'll work with everything else. Or maybe not Edge. I don't know if it works in Edge. But, no, it wouldn't work in Edge. Last time I checked, it was quite annoying. Mm. Yeah, and I think they're a bit slow up in the uptake with Mac uh, Mac compatibility as well, the old ATO. they got a lot on their plate. Yeah. Now, now Joe, I, sorry, I just saw that you had that story as well about Amazon. So apologies for that. I, I took your story. That's right all right. Start. No you did a good job. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, but we're well, talking about Chrome. I don't know. Um, you can just uh, ch- chirp in whenever you want, Joe, if you've got any um, opinions on these things. But Google Chrome 68, version 68, introduces this HTTPS as the new must-have security. Mm. So this, what's going to happen is in, I think it says July. Yeah, Google estimates the release of Chrome 68 sometime at the beginning of July 2018. Uh, once they make the jump, only browsers, the other uh, other browsers are likely to follow. So what is happening here is that uh, the user of a page uh, will be notified quite plainly uh, that it's not secure if it is indeed not a secure page. Uh, if that means that the website isn't hasn't had a secure or an SSL attached to it. Now, Google's objective is to ensure. Internet users can easily recognise whether sites are safe or not. Uh, the not secure warning will be prominently displayed uh, in an effort to drive the world toward a more secure global internet. Google Chrome began marking all HTT, HTTP web pages with forms as insecure last year, and as well as HTTP uh, sites open through an incognito window. So look, that that's not that's not a bad thing, to be mm. honest. Like it's uh, you know, I don't put my details into a form if i look up and i see at the address bar i say it's not https i go no i'm not gonna do it i just you I'll, gotta be careful about those sort of things as well because i've heard in the past even though it does have the the lock in place sometimes you still can um get caught out because some websites uh, deliberately uh go ahead and do that they get mm. all the uh the, the right protection and everything and fool people into thinking that it's safe and then they still do the wrong thing anyway. So you've got to be careful about that as well. Yeah. I yes, guess, but there's one thing, sorry, there's one, I oh, hear I am interrupting. <laughs> there's one good thing about the Google one with it. It turns green because Google actually scans the Google browser actually scans the whole website. And if there's one, one small item on that page, that's got a HTTP instead of a HTTPS or something like that, it'll say it's still got a certificate, but it'll flag it as red, yeah. you know? So you can kind of almost trust Google to be sure about that. They're scanning well ahead of the content and mm. providing a certificate rather than just showing a certificate without showing whether the content's been scanned. Yeah. So I think Joe, you're right when you say like the, there's 
the SSL certificate and the HTTPS, well, yeah, sure, you know, when you're connected to that site, your information is secure going from you to that site, but is that site legit? And that's still going to be the problem. Because uh, like you can get these free SSLs these days if you know what you're doing and you can in, and you can put them into your website. Uh, but that's right. If they're free or they're very cheap, at least, then everyone, even the, the nasty people are going to have them, aren't they? Just to try and fool you, another level of foolness that they're going to try and bring that's out. Right. Yeah, you've, got to, you've got to really look at different, different aspects of it as well and see whether there's anything that, that looks really sus about the site. Um, not just go by by that um, that little lock in the corner. Yeah, you can trust Google a little bit more though with it. I think. Yeah, you're right there. Google is probably one of the ones you most tr- you can trust most. But um, if there's something other than that, yeah, just look at the look at the page carefully, and um, especially if it's not a well-known you know company or any like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just got to be just keep your wits about you. Now, look, here's a, here's a story here that I think is, I don't know, you'd have, I'd have to be alarmed that this even got off the ground, to be honest. But it's that a school shooting game called Active Shooter has been pulled by Steam. So why is this even a thing? You know, why is it even a thing that has to be pulled? So a game pitched as a school shooting simulation has been ditched from Steam's online store ahead of its release. So to me, that means it's all it's up and running, uh, you know, ready to be released. I think this is disturbing, and I think it's it's disgraceful. And two right it should have been taken be down. That's what you're saying. That's right, and it says uh, the title has been criticised. I wonder why by parents of real life school shooting victims, and an, on, an online petition opposing its launch has attracted more than 180 thousand signatures. Oh, why wouldn't it? Now, Steam's owner Valve said it had dropped the game. Because its developer had a history of bad behaviour. Like, are you joking? Like, why would you even get this bad behaviour? Like, that's why Why is it even commissioned in the first place? So what if the guy's that bad behaviour? Wouldn't you just be going, well, mate, we're not going to even... Com- you're not even going to start that piece of crap. Mm. And, um, Valve subsequently emailed the media to say it had taken action ahead of Active Shooter schedule release on the 6th of June. Well, that's just crazy. That is just absolutely craziness. Like, well, I've got a picture here of supposedly what what it was the graphics were going to look like, and that's just no good at all. That's the sort of stuff where I think if if you're uh, if you are a bit mentally disturbed, that sort of this is the sort of game that probably could push you over, or or, mm. or could bring you know, or could make the actual you picking up a gun and going and doing something like this more of a a normal type of action. You know, because you've just been sitting at home all day doing it in fantasy land and yeah, that's terrible. Oh. That's just that's crazy. It's terrible. Wasn't there a threat in Queensland or something on Facebook this week? Oh, was there? I don't know. I didn't see that. Something about someone said they were gonna make make it worse than America or something. I don't know. Oh, I, I, I'd only be touching on the story I know nothing about, so I probably should not comment too much, but I just yeah. thought being that you're up that way, you might have had more information than me. I haven't heard of thing. I haven't heard of that one. I I heard of another scam of where someone from the Philippines or China they ring you up and they just yell at you, telling <laughs> you <laughs> threat, and they just they yell at you, they threaten you, and they say if you don't pay me money, here's me bank. If you don't pay this money, you've done this to me, you've done that to me, or whatever. Uh, we're gonna come and bash you or kill you, or we're gonna come and bash your family, kill your family, and so that's another scam. They're just doing it, to, and people are paying, obviously, because they're scared. Yeah. So anyway, ring the cops. They want to try. Uh, they want to try and ring a few of these people that have been hassled by the spammers. They'll fight back. Mm. They're the same. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, here's here's one up your alley, Joe. I reckon. Now, Blue Note audio <laughs> attacks corrupts hard drive. So University of Michigan and the Shijiang University researchers described how the Blue Note attack could. Uh, attack could use acoustic interference to cause hard drive heads and magnetic storage platters to vibrate, which in turn generates data corruption and operating system reboots. So mm. there you go. Now, put that into a bit more of a something you can understand. So audio signals in the 5 kilohertz range were able to distort 
hard drive platters at 70 decibel strength on the devices. So with, it, with inaudible ultrasound, the researchers were able to trick the shock sensor into reacting the read and write head on drives in into parked position, which is done for protection against the drops of those particular drives. So in some cases, these researchers were able to co-op the built-in speakers in desktop and laptop computers for the audio attacks. So no special equipment is needed, apparently. So two years ago, ING Bank in Bucharest, Romania, tested a data center in Ergen fire suppression system, which caused loud noises and vibration, damaging discs, discs in the facility. ING suffered a 10-hour service outage thanks to the test that went a bit crazy and had to bring in an additional 70 staff to recover their systems. So to mitigate against audio attacks, the researchers modelled a feedback controller that can be deployed via firmware update to the hard drives. How's that? So, I don't know, basically, if you still didn't get it all, it's certain noises at a certain decibel and a certain length can bust your hard drive. Yeah. So well, I guess, there you go. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's anything can happen in the right spot, can't it? Everything's got a weakness. Yeah. If you've just got to find the, the, the precise spot and you make it fail. It's like when, a, when an opera singer sings really high and breaks the glass. Yes. Have you ever, have, can you sing that high, Jordan? Oh, no. No. <laughs> We'd be, uh, you'd be looking for that pizza if you could go that high, I'd imagine. I think so. Be yeah, a very hot pizza. Yes. You know, there's have all to these, burn um, the way down. There's all these IoT devices that are coming out at the moment, and uh, there's a really big security issue with those as well. Yes, right. Oh, the, I think the more things that are going to jump on the internet, there's going to be security issues everywhere. I saw right. even uh, another Tesla car had an accident on autopilot. Now, I don't have the full story, but uh, apparently it crashed into a parked car. And, uh, yeah. Tesla. Yeah? They're the ones, are they? Tesla, yeah. yeah. I was just saying, Tesla. I haven't heard of Tesla having the accidents before. Yeah, I didn't have another one over. This one was in California. Look, I don't have the story. I can I can have a quick look for it if you want. That's right. But um, I've got, I've got a little story I can fill in for if you like. All right, you do yours. And just then... something short. I don't want to read too much of it. I just... We've touched on this be- this before. Um, you know how Facebook Messenger, I was I was all excited when Jason read this story about how Facebook Messenger in the US was releasing it for the kids? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and what the, so the, the way it was going to work is that the parents um, would, would approve the kids' Messenger on there. So it would belong to them, to their Facebook account, and then the, the, the other kids would be approved by other parents. And that sort of thing, so yes. that they can all. Yep. yep. Well, they're taking that a bit. They're taking that away now, and they've said that Facebook Messenger is now going to let the kids. I think what was it? The Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Facebook Messenger's kids application, which allows under thirteen-year-olds with parents' approval, uh, is today rolling out a small but notable change. It is no longer requiring that the children's parents be Facebook friends with one another. Uh, in order for the, the children to connect. Right. Uh, this solves one of the problems with the, um, with the app's early design where it, where it uh, operated more like an extension of the parent's own social circle instead of the child's own social circle. Mm. Uh, and, of course, the parents still have to approve every contact their child adds as usual. Uh, as, as parents understand, there is always going to be those friends, you know, that aren't their, their acquaintances and yeah. And, you know, and all that sort of stuff, blah, blah, blah. It says the Messenger's Kids now allows the kids to connect if you're okay with it. Hmm. So yeah. that'll kind of give it a bit of a boost. They've said that there's about 500,000 installs so far. It's only in the US. It's not worldwide yet, I don't think. Hmm. So I've, there's hope for it. Oh, yes, yes. yes. It's uh, like with any, all this social media stuff, people are just getting on it earlier and earlier and, you know, I, look, I know my kids aren't on it, not till I don't even want them on at 13, but we'll see what happens. But uh, having a, a, a way for the kids to communicate, I mean, they're doing it now, whether you like it or not. That's they're, right. They're finding other ways to do it. So why not be able to have a little bit of oversee of it mm. and control it? And I think, and, kid, right? yeah, and from what I believe uh, is going on is that the kids aren't really using the Facebook anyway. Apparently Facebook now is for the old fogies. Yeah, that's they're a, all using Instagram pretty much now. Yeah, well, even that's all too old now. It's all just Snapchat and stuff like this. Like, who would have thought Snapchat? But I think Facebook Messenger has a lot of potential to be 
you know, pretty much what iMessage and all those things are now to the kids, mm. except yeah. with just more of a hands-on approach and you can kind of see what's going on and talk to their kids about bullying and all that sort of stuff and see it happen because you're in more, a little bit more control. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I, think, I think, good. think that might just be about all. Did you have anything else, Joe, that you wanted to talk about? Well, has anyone heard that there's a new Atari coming out soon? No, but I've heard actually one of the posts on our Facebook page. I was going to go through these posts just quickly. Uh, I have heard that. Where is it? Because Jace puts a lot of posts up onto the Facebook page. Uh, where is he? In the Intellivision. There's an Intellivision announces brand new game console. So I don't know. It's not Atari, but uh, did you? Did... Uh, I had I posted something this afternoon on my uh, Facebook page about the Atari games console. Right, new one. Yes, it's uh, kind of come out soon, um, later on in the year. It actually uh, runs uh, Linux. And oh. you can actually, yeah. It comes uh, built in with 100 games, 100 classic uh, games from uh, Atari, so you get to still play those. But at the same time, it allows you to um, install some um, other games from Linux. Right. So I hope that do they uh, improve the... Uh, graphics, hopefully. There it is. There. I, I, I think they do a little bit, but it does say that you, it doesn't play high end games, only just the smaller end games. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, geez, well, I remember growing up as a kid, it was either Atari or Intellivision. And, uh, you know, what I went for the Intellivision. And I think they were about, about the same price. I think from memory, they might have been 350 And that's a lot of money back then, back in the, in the, in the cold 70s, cold poor 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so we had the Intellivision. I quite like the Intellivision because it had better graphics. Uh, and there's a new one coming out, so that's good. Uh, other other news that has been shared this week on our Facebook page, just quickly before we go, Plex now supports uh, podcasts, so you can subscribe to all of us there. That's um, a good one. Yeah, I nearly I'm, read that. <laughs> is, is that any good? I mean, I, I don't know. It's pretty hard to work out which sort of podcast uh, client to use. I mean, I've... I tried Stitch this week, um, and I don't know. I'm still, you know, up in the air about which one I should get. Is this what for the? Is this for Plex? Do you mean? Yeah, is the Plex one any good? I don't use it. I don't know. Jay's well, Plex is uh, Plex is. You were talking about Cody earlier, Joe. Plex is more. It's a home theater thing, and I think the podcast feature, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't read the article completely, but. I'm assuming it'll be under the Plex Pass, the Plex Pass account. I'm not sure that it'll be a free feature. Oh, yeah. the right. Well, yeah, it'd have to be free because podcasts are free. Huh? Yeah, but all these features that they keep adding on Plex seem to be within um, within yeah, the Plex right. Pass. Like they've got the basics for running your own home media and, and stuff like that. And there's a few little, you know, yeah. channels you can add, like you do with Cody. You can add apps and stuff in the background. But I don't remember them i don't remember reading anywhere about the, the podcasts being available outside the podcast. Uh, i'd have to have a look i could be wrong well what you could do you could you know you could download your podcast through itunes or whatever and spotify then, is great for, yeah some yeah we're on the spotify you can get aussie tickets yeah. on the spotify podcast as well uh but other look i don't want to hold everyone up for too much longer but just keep going through these other stories through the week uh, we did that. We did the Intellivision one. Melbourne IT changes its name to the Arc Group. It was approved at the AGM. <laughs> we mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we did. I don't know I why. Still about it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why. I don't know when. I don't know how. But that's ridiculous. Uh, what's this? Optus Telso. Yeah, yeah. We did that. That was the Virgin ones. Hackers get a Nintendo Switch to run Linux. There you go. There's a good one for that for your hackers, for your geeks. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and there's my home mini that I got, seventy nine bucks on the ticket. Uh uh forty nine bucks. <laughs> so yeah, so that's good. Uh, well, that's about all. What the... was the um? What was the Tesla one you said before? You want to touch on that in case anyone was waiting for you to come back with your story, or were you you happy with everything? Oh, I'm always happy with everything, but I can tell you the Tesla story because I did look at it, and it did come up. It was one of the first ones that came up. Tesla, if I typed in, oh no, what did I type in? I have to, I typed in Tesla crash, that's right. Crash. We'll see what comes up. Yeah, t yeah this is the one here, the Telstra. The tel Tesla. <laughs> you know what? Is it going to come up? Yeah, the Tesla hit 
parked police car of all oh. cars while using autopilot. Oops. It was a, it was a fair hit too, by the look yeah. of it. Like, you know, like, I don't understand. Like, where's all this go? Why are they on the road? I don't really, to be honest, like them too much. The, uh, so the driver suffered minor injuries and told police that she was using the car's driver-assisted autopilot mode. The crash has similarities to other incidents, including a fatal crash in Florida, where the driver's over-reliance on vehicle automation was determined as probable cause. Like, it, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, of a big ask, isn't it? Like to, you know, put a one and a half ton lump of metal into an autopilot mode on a road. I don't, I don't <laughs> think we're ready. To be honest, no, we're not quite there yet, are we? No, and I don't know why they're allowed on the roads, but apparently there's there's test roads and stuff going on in Adelaide. Was it Adelaide having a test run, or Sydney was doing a test run? But yeah, I don't know about that. that scares you. It makes you think, you know, what happened back in the old days when we first had cars. Well, I think probably the same issues happened um, when they moved from to. horse mm-hmm. horse and buggy to a car. I think there were probably similar issues where they go, "Oh, these cars are so dangerous." And uh, but you know, but then there were no proper roads or anything like this, you know, so um, no uh, cushy seats, you know, nothing like that. Would have been more drink driving back there, though, I reckon. (laughs) Probably (laughs) a lot more. Mm. All right, well, I think that's good. What's this? Justin says Tesla, Tesla of opening a shop front in Brisbane. Oh, well, there you go. Nice. And I thought there was one in Melbourne. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, Justin uses C Podcast Addict, Joe, for a good catcher, podcast catcher. Yeah, that's the one I was just looking for on my phone. I was thinking, what is that app I was using? And I I can't remember what it was, and I was looking for it. It's not on there. But I think that's the one I first started listening to Aussie Tech Heads on. Yeah, Yeah. right. I'm actually using an Apple phone um, since... Like, you know, my first show, I said I hadn't had an Apple phone since uh, the 3GS. Yeah. I yeah. actually borrowed one off a friend of mine. Thanks, Frank, for, for uh, letting me borrow your phone for a, for a month. And, nice. And um, I'm using the Stitch, the Stitcher, is it the Stitcher? Yeah, that's a, that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm using that on this, um, mainly because I was looking for something that's multi-platform. I think today when you buy something or when you use something, whether it's um, you know for the home or for your phone or for anywhere, you have to go multi-platform. Oh yeah. If you do use, if you go into something and it's just Apple only, you're going to get caught down the road. Eventually, everything. Uh, hmm. My advice to anyone who wants to buy anything, uh, like in home automation or anything, use uh, multi-platform. And that's why I use the Stitcher. And I've got to tell you, I'm not real keen on it. Um, on Android, I use the I'm an Android user mostly, and I have uh, UPod. I use UPod, which I think um, doesn't, they're not, not available on, on Apple. Is that right? Apple users? No, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> what did no. you say it was called? UPod. UPod. Oh, I'll, I'll Google it. Let's have a look. UPod. Because I know once I get my phone back, and you haven't got it back yet, it'll be two weeks on this coming Wednesday. Uh, what was it? UPod. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Is that uh, as in the letter U or Y O U? Yeah, must be Y Y Y O U Pod. U box, U hall, U shape. We'll try Y O U Y O U U Pod. U P O D. One word. Yeah, one word only. U P O D. U P O D. And, and I'm pretty happy with that one. It does it does everything I want it to do, um, but it's not multi-platform, you see? Yeah, right. You still have to pay for it twice, though. <laughs> even you though it's, have to pay for even it twice. If it's multi-platform, you're still going to have to pay for it from Apple and then pay for it from Android when you swap. Well, you know what? Um, it's uh, not truly I took, I took your advice, Jordan, and I went and got that last pass. You like it? I, I like it. That's actually multi-platform. It does it on my. It does it on my PC. It does it on my right. Android phone. It does it, does it on my Apple everywhere. Phone. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, it's good. And that's it's pretty good. Mm. And instead of having it just on a document on your computer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. That's well. a good comparison. <laughs> that's a good good one to compare it with. If you really wanted to compare it with some other ones, there's plenty of good um, good 
secure ones like that, like iPassword and there's um, RoboForm and mm. there's a few different ones you could try. When I get my uh, phone back, the Android phone that I've sent back because it didn't work properly, when I get that back, I'll, yeah, I'm interested in getting a podcast app to say that I can, uh, you know, play a podcast on the phone and then I can walk, say, through the front door and have it continue. Not automatically, but I'll say I'll continue that podcast to the you. home mini. Yeah. And that'd be good. That's where that'd I want it. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to get to. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, right? And that's, that's, one, that's what I don't think ViewPod doesn't do that. Um, and that's why I wanted to give Stitcher a bit of a, a, a go because Stitcher is multi-platform. But I, don't know, I just don't like the way it works. I, I, that or I don't know how to use it properly. Yeah. What was that one someone put me onto? I think it might have been uh, Jace. Was it Shifty Jelly's podcast or something? I'll just, this, I'll just do – we'll tell you about this and then we'll just get out of here. But, yeah, Shifty Jelly, I think it was, because I think I downloaded this. It was about 3 bucks, but I haven't seen its full pocket cast. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Pocket Cast was good. I remember trying that one out. Yeah, I, I've, I've used Pocket Cast as well in the past, and that's good. I think I had an issue with um, Bluetooth on the phone uh, and, and connected to the car with that for some reason. Right, right. Uh, so I stopped using it. Now, I know my car keeps dropping the Bluetooth. I don't know if it's the iPhone or if it's the actual car doing it. So I'll be interested try, when I get try one. Using, try using a different app. You might find that it might be just the app itself sometimes. Yeah, well, I think it could be the phone. So when I get my new fo- well, my phone back, my Android, uh, yeah, hopefully I have, yeah. Hopefully you get that soon. Oh, look, I bought it from Kogan. So they've got, they've, <laughs> sent, they've had to send it back to Hong Kong. They've got some little dude over there probably, oh, it's broken. And then they go, we're well, going to have to wait another week to get another one. So it's probably yeah. out of stock. I'll get the refund. I'll be stuck on Apple after me, you know, took all me, all me power to get there and oh, <laughs> we just force back. All right, all right, good stuff. Okay, good stuff. Thanks for coming in, everyone. Now, yeah. wh- where, where's your Facebook? What's your Facebook page, Joe? Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Joe the Gadget Man. And where's your web page? It's Joe the Gadgets Man.com. And we can email you, contact you from there, from the yeah, web page. Yeah, you just hit go to the contacts page. I'll put it in the um, in the timeline if people want to have a look at it. Um, Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. And Jordan, can people call you? Ring you up, can they? Jordan at AussieDeckheads.com.au. <laughs> Is nice. that the one? Are you, you, I think you've got that email there for me somewhere. Has anybody yes. emailed it? No. no. <laughs> Are you you're taking bookings for weddings, parties? Oh look, there's always my bands. Yeah. I've got um I've got the, the live tribute show. It's a tribute to the band called Live. Okay, nice. Um, that's oh. awesome. You can have a look at that, lightningcrashes.com.au. That just get links to the Facebook page. We haven't done a gig in a while, but love to give that, uh, get that going. If they pay, we can come We can come up to Queensland if you want, Glenn. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll... Go tee us up a gig. Um, oh, there's just my my local band, which is just fudge. But, mm. you know, there's things happening all, all over the place. Nice. Mm. And you know where to contact me at glenn at aussietechheads.com.au, Facebook, for contact on the webpage or whatever you want. You know what to do. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. Hopefully, uh, we'll hear from Jace next week. Eric says hi. Facebook, thanks. For... Yeah, good to see you there, Eric. Yeah. Are you... I thought Jason was going to pop up. We want to see Will and Jace next week on the on the live feed if they're not here. He's, he's going to have to because I can't make it next week. So he's going to have to, uh, yeah, well, he'll have to pull his socks up. All right, yeah. so good stuff. So thanks for everyone joining us on the live Facebook. What we'll probably do is I reckon uh, just the way it's going to work is that the live Facebook video, will I'll probably take that back down and just so that the uh, the video is the YouTube video so we're not getting confused with so many videos. Uh, yeah, so if you want to watch us live, you might get a bit of chit-chat after and before the show, so you're welcome to come, jump in then. But otherwise, you'll just get the YouTube video, which will be... Uh, top and tail with the, the credits and the credits that I haven't changed for five years. Yeah, probably the live stream version of it. And put that and just replace it with a more polished if you can call that more polished YouTube version of it. That's one polishing. Alright. 
Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, Jordan. Thanks, Joe. No worries. Thank you. And no worries. Thanks, Joe. And thanks, everyone, for listening, downloading, watching on YouTube, whatever it is. So all the all the best. Happy winter. It starts this week. <laughs> Stay warm. See you later. Yeah. Go to the Sharks and New South Wales. Bye-bye.